Chapter 14. You'll need these. At dusk, we began the crossing of the valley. Keeping low as quail, we threaded our way through prickly pear and yuccas. Miguel began to limp faster on his bad knee, keeping the lights of Apache on his left. Close on his heels, I picked up a shoe full of cactus needles, but didn't say anything. Up ahead, there were cars on the highway. Not many, but sometimes they came in bunches. When we got close, Miguel hid me in the brush, then bellied up to the shoulder of the road. He crossed first while I waited. When Miguel's whistle finally came, I scrambled up the shoulder and darted across. After days on dirt, rock, and sand, the pavement under my feet felt strange. I ran into the cover of the shrub on the far side of the highway. Stay down, I heard Miguel call. Cars were coming from both directions. At last, there was nothing but quiet, and Miguel whistled again. I found him, and we crouched together in the brush. It's really dark, I said. I was shivering, and not just from the cold. Not much moonlight is getting through those clouds. The clouds are thin, he scoffed. Plenty of light. It seems farther to the mountains than it did before, I said. I couldn't help it. I was trembling. Are you sure there isn't another way? There are hundreds. You could cross at Naco and try to find the Americans in Bisbee who hide people in their homes and sometimes even drive them to Tuscan or Phoenix. You could cross into the Hachua Mountains, the Patagonias, or the Pacharitos. You could try Santa Cruz Valley, the Alter Valley, the Indian Reservation, the Oregon Pipe Cactus Park, the Cabeza Prita, Enough, I said. I'm sorry I questioned you. We wouldn't be here if I didn't think this was best. Only four more miles and we'll be in those mountains, compadre. compadre. I just wish it wasn't so dark. Seconds later, we came to a dirt road parallel to the highway. Miguel whispered instructions in my ear. I crossed first. Miguel, walking backwards, erased our tracks with a small piece of brush. With that, we headed into the open, the Chirichawa Mountains, four miles away. The valley floor was mostly grasses sprinkled with bushes and octilo. No places to hide as far as I could see. I felt safe as a caterpillar crawling through a yard full of chickens. What about the heat cameras and all the other migra tricks? Miguel went as fast as he could on his stick, wincing with the pain but showing none of the fear and i none of the fear i still couldn't shake beyond the clouds there were stars like candles burning the idea of the candles helped i could see my mother in the village church lighting a candle for me in front of the lady i saw my family sitting around the table chewy making one of his chango faces he really did look like a little monkey the land began to rise as we started up a plain of gravel the bushes were knee-high, still no cover. As, as I soon discovered, Miguel had a plan all along. He'd been marching toward a snaking line of mystique bushes that turned out to, be mark, to, turn out to mark the bank of a dry stream bed cutting through the valley from the mountain. When we dropped 10 or more feet to the bottom of the arrow, I felt a lot safer. We followed the twists and turns of the wash until we came to a sharp corner dammed by logs and rocks. We had no choice but to climb out. Miguel led the way. He crawled out on his knees uh, so as not to attract attention, and I did the same. The clouds had parted in front of the moon. It was more than half full and shining much too bright. We drop back, as, back in as soon as we can, Miguel whispered. He pointed to the sprinklings of oak and juniper trees on higher ground, on the lap of the mountains. Once we get inside those, we're invisible. His words were still hanging in the air. I happened to be looking back toward the highway when the headlights of a vehicle suddenly came on between the highway, between the highway and us. They were pointed in our direction. Miguel, I yelped. Don't look. Don't like the looks of that, Miguel muttered. Their instruments must might be on us. Keep low. We've been so careful. It must be someone else they're after. The headlights began to move. I could see the shape of the vehicle. Per 
Pereira, I said, as it gained more and more speed, heading our way. Bad luck, Miguel grunted and took off hobbling on his stick. Half a minute later, he found a way back down into the dry creek bed. On my way over the steep embankment, I slipped and banged my arm. No matter, I caught up with him, and that was all that counted. It was slow going in the wash, but we would be spotted if we climbed out. We made some progress, but then I thought I heard a, the Pereira. We stopped and listened. Holy mother of God, I said. The dog wagon was over our left shoulders and not far behind. Miguel clapped me on the shoulder. You have the advantage, Victor. They're wearing heavy armor. You can run faster than they can. We heard their truck stopping and the sound of a slamming door. We looked back and saw a patrolman at the top of the bank, but a hundred yards behind us. The migra had his gun drawn and was on his way down to the bottom of the arrow. Where, we, where were the clouds when we needed them? He'll find our footprints, I whispered. Follow quietly, Miguel whispered back. We'd barely gotten started when a second patrolman appeared at the top of the bank much closer. No question, he had seen us. Miguel tried to run on the walking stick. The patrolman yelled for us to stop and give ourselves up. Miguel took off desperately fast. All I knew was this couldn't be the end. I picked my way through the rubble along the rocky floor of the wash. I caught up, caught up as Miguel was climbing out of the bank opposite the two border patrol. We lost track of them, but they hadn't lost track of us. Just when I thought they had decided to let us go, their vehicle fired up and went and started following along the other side of the arrow. As long as there was no way for them to cross, we were going to be okay. Ahead, the oaks and the junipers grew thicker, taller. Just beyond them, the steep, brushy slope offered good cover. Hope began to run strong. The mountains were close, so close. Suddenly, mindless of Miguel... I sprinted ahead. A sharp cry came from behind. Miguel was down. I ran back to him. I'll be okay in a minute, he said. Lie flat next to me in these rocks. Let's hope they can't get across. Look, thick clouds covering the moon. Suddenly it was a whole lot darker and we had hope again. I waited on my belly. The engine sounded different, muffled. They're in the bottom of the wash, Miguel said. They found a place to get across. The border patrol truck climbed out of the arrow arroyo, not a hundred yards behind us. The patrolman got out, looking all around. Neither of us moved a muscle. From that distance in the dark, we we were just two more rocks, or so we were hoping. Fortunately, their headlights weren't on us. Then something weird. Two pairs of circular eyes glowing green in the dark. Night vision goggles, Miguel whispered. Help me up, quick. I did, but he was shaky on his feet and needed steadying. We looked over our shoulders into the blinding headlights of the border patrol. Hurry, Miguel told himself as he took off, but he had hurt himself and couldn't go any faster. The ground was strewn with rocks which promised to be our salvation. The border patrol couldn't drive any faster than Miguel could hobble. We managed to close the distance to the trees by half and were entering a boulder field. Finally, the Pereira ground to a halt, its headlight frozen in place. It's too rough for them to keep going, I said. They're going to let us go. I'll believe that when I see it. Miguel rested on my shoulder as we waited to see if they were going to chase us on foot. Please, Miguel mur murmured, show us mercy. It wasn't to be. The patrolmen were coming on. One of them had a rifle, or maybe it was a shotgun. Fast as he could, Miguel hobbled on. The oaks and the junipers were no more than 300 yards away. Miguel looked back toward the patrolman. Suddenly, he dropped his pack to the ground and tore it open. I had no idea what he was doing. Miguel pulled out his map, grabbed the can opener, shoved them at me. You'll need these lighters. You'll need these lighters to start fires, he said. Here, take this roll of parachute cord. Go high. M Miguel. He slapped his switchblade into my hand. You'll need this too to make kindling. Let's go. Let's go. As fast as I could, I stowed these things and we took off again. Miguel trying to run. After a fashion like a crippled dog, he was able to. 
A glance over my shoulder and I could see that patrolmen were running too. They were closing in. Miguel stumbled and almost went down. Grab hold of my shoulder, I cried. They'll catch us both. Miguel held back and then he stopped in his tracks. Now is the time, Miguel said. Run as fast as you can. Now without you, let them deport us. We'll start over. They'll split us up. Listen, Victor, you can make it to La Pera Flaca. Without you? If you find work, wait for me there. I'll be along. I froze. Go, go, Miguel screamed. I took off running. A glance over my shoulder and I saw Miguel following as best as he could. The patrolmen were practically on, on him when Miguel tripped and went down. I halted in my tracks. They were handcuffing Miguel. Stop, one of them called after me. Stop, please. Sit down right where you are. I ran. I looked back and I could see that the more slender of the two was chasing me. The patrolman was fast, very fast, even with his body armor, and he was gaining ground. But I had more reason to run than he ever would. I ran toward the trees with everything I had. My lungs opened and my eyes widened to see like an owl. I put my fear aside and ran, ran for my family. I didn't look back again. I ran into the thicket of cat claw mystique. The cat claw tore my cheeks and my hands, but didn't stop me. I could hear the patrolman panting to keep up. I led him deeper into the thorny shrub where he might not put up with the punishment. At last, I was out of the thorns under the dense and friendly cover of oak and juniper. I was pretty sure I'd lost the migra. Finally, I stopped. I threw myself on the ground. I waited, listening for the slightest sound. For a long time, there was nothing but the night insects and the hooting of an owl. I was alone.